Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the podcast that talks show where we have digital discussions in the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, sports, everything really depends on the guests talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miotis. On social media, you know me as Peter Beats. My guest is an actor. You recognize him from a lot of cool things, including the show Grownish. Henry Esteve is with us. Henry, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Awesome. Thank you for having me, bro. No problem. I mean, it's all storytelling, acting, writing, directing, even music, performing. When did you decide that storytelling was something you wanted to do, Henry? Pretty young. I, I didn't know it would be acting. I didn't know like that there was actually a career path that I was going <laughs> to fall into. Um, but yeah, as a kid, I think I always was kind of just into stories. I would disappear into my room like with the same movie. I would wear out a VHS just watching things over and over and over again. Which is crazy. What was kind of what were your kind of go to movies or kind of genre or style growing up? So I, this is obviously the VHS days were real young. Uh, so <laughs> it was Lion King. It was, it was Lion King. <laughs> all dogs go to heaven. Um, <laughs> there, I feel like Homeward Bound got a good amount the of Penguin run back and the day. Pebble. Do you remember that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same stuff. It's all the it's all the same stuff. <laughs> I know, man. It's crazy. But now it's cool because you've had, you've had an opportunity to work on, on on some really cool shows like Revenge and, of course, Grownish that we're talking about. Grownish is kind of cool because we, we 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 talk about, you know, sequels and spinoffs for movies a lot. But it's cool that TV has become such a monster to begin with. I mean, now there's kind of shows that are getting kind of spinoffs and you're on one of those shows. That's pretty cool as well. It's wild. And I do a really good job of, like, creating a universe which yep. is like you know and obviously they're marvel has done it so well in movies but like they're now where you get to see characters from blackish drop into grownish for an app or like do a campus visit and those things are uh yeah it's fun to get to see the story just really expand it's true the ish universe so to speak <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything except mixed ish i don't know how they'll do i'm sure they're gonna do I'm sure there's Do some crossovers. There's something. There's I'm something. Curious. I wouldn't. I wouldn't count. I wouldn't count it out. Like there's something they could yeah. do there. We'll figure is, something out, or like a young version of uh, Anthony Anderson. Or... Absolutely. One thing about Gronish is the Gronish is out of all the issues. I mean, that's the one that really focuses on the coming of age and all of that and all the relationships and there's some drama there's some comedy in there it really focuses on the growth of these characters including your character as well talk a little bit about kind of stepping in the shoes of characters like that where a show like this where it focuses on the growth of these kind of young up-and-coming um actors and characters in these shows henry because it's very interesting it's great i mean i think there's it's a double-sided coin in like one respect it's just it's more fun to play somebody who's growing like yeah. it, it's it's nice to to be able to find kind of i think when we all grow we're all like kind of doing there's habits that we're creating so yeah. like to find those little things and start playing with that and then other than that like i'm a little older than javi um so to kind of just look back and like i already have the life experience that he's kind of going through and he's getting these lessons as he's going um it's nice to like be able to actually know what he's experiencing and be able to like bring the lesson know the lesson before he gets it javi is a character that like a lot of characters on tv shows and films you can kind of say this for everyone henry are very complex characters there's kind of a lot going on um how do you prepare for a role like javi henry i mean so javi's a cuban republican poli sci major from Miami. Um, I'm a Cuban, not Republican from Miami, mm -hmm. but uh, I definitely, I, I know Javi, you know what I mean? Like I grew up with a good amount of hobbies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in that respect, it, it was pretty easy to fall into to his behavior patterns and mm -hmm. more so in what I'm just saying, like physically and, and his cadence. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then other than that, I for me, I always think like writers consciously or not will put like one line in a script that just sums up a character that's just kind of their like mantra. Yep. Um, and I don't remember the specific verbiage of what it was in season three that, that Javi said, but it was like something about just like really focusing on, on growth on like him really trying to be disciplined and like change behavior patterns. Um, so yeah, I find a little like nugget like that and then just kind of start digging at that in my own life and bringing those experiences in. A lot of shows that are labeled as comedies, I feel like have have evolved into there's a lot of heart in a lot of shows. It's like not just kind of a sitcom or it's not just kind of an hour comedy, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that happens. There's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of heart. When do you think that kind of started where it wasn't just kind of a funny half an hour show where there was like some serious kind of underlines as well, Henry, because that's a, that was an interesting kind of transition in TV and film as well. Yeah. I feel like it's been a newer, you know, the past like decade or so, like uh, I wasn't like a big friends person. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like friends didn't really have that yet. Like that, that was still in like the traditional sitcom world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think I, I think it was shows like HBO shows, uh, like kind of like Entourage that were these like really fun shows or like Californication on Showtime, like yep. these really fun shows that were really funny, but also just had a lot of heart and a lot of um, you know dark moments in it in their own respects. Yeah, it's it's interesting though because I feel like every show now that's labeled as a comedy, you watch them and you're like, "This is funny. I'm enjoying myself, but yeah. this is deep." Yeah, like this I is mean, this is this is. There's a lot of heart. Like one of my favorite shows right now is on Apple TV called Ted Lasso. With Jason I've heard Sudeikis. so much about it. I haven't watched it yet. It has so much heart. It's not just this kind of slapstick s- soccer sports comedy. Like right. it really kind of hits you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. I think it's interesting. So you you get where I'm coming from then, where the sure. comedy has kind of evolved. It's. I think TV is evolving now into this place where like drama and comedy are no longer just these strict boxes that we're putting shows in and things are able to live in the middle. Like I think Atlanta did such a, a amazing job of kind of blowing the boxes yeah, away. The dramedy a little bit. Cause there's, yeah. all, there's some drama. It, in that show. Drama definitely has like very, very strong um, social commentary, like, and is hilarious also. Yeah. And that it's, I think filmmakers are also evolving and and are just getting better at being able to play on every side of that field. Absolutely. It's interesting because you're an actor. People recognize you as Javi and Gronish. They've seen you in Revenge. You've been around. You've been doing this for a good amount of time. A lot of people, though, want to wear many hats. They want to experiment. Um, You're obviously focusing on your acting, but have you, like, is, is it, like, does it ever come to to be the idea of one day, you know, writing your own movie, directing, producing, or is something is acting kind of what you want to maybe focus on? Uh, no, for sure. I definitely acting is I'm, I'm my happiest acting, I think. Um, but a lot of people say that like a yeah. lot of people there, it's weird. Like I'll interview people that do it all. They act, they write, they produce, they direct. And then you ask them out of the four, which one they like the most. And it's always acting. It's weird to me. It's like, also, it's, it's it's a little less long term too. Mm, like, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. come on a project and you leave, <laughs> which is really nice. We're like, you I've, said it all. Right. That's why. Yeah. It, that's what it is. you have to edit something for another six months after you wrap, and then you gotta wait. Like, it's it's just a much more monotonous process, I think, on the other side. But that being said. I do love uh, directing and writing also. Writing is just one of those things you got to put yourself in the chair, bro. And like, you got to just be really disciplined about getting in that chair. And that ends up being hard to do when you're, for me, it ends up being difficult while I'm like, like we're shooting Gronish right now. And it's so hard for me to get writing done because I'm like, when I get a day off, I'm just like, I don't want to sit in a chair and stare at a blank page. Do you find it's like, 
does it become like because like you you're going on set right and no matter whether it's like a day's work or a couple of scenes you're transforming into javi for that amount of time right there's a transformation right you're not yeah. henry esteve anymore you're javi for grownish right yeah is it is it does it come a point where you kind of get used to it or is it always going to be kind of just like an exhausting, overwhelming kind of transition sometimes? <laughs> no, yeah, I think it gets really not easy, but yeah. it definitely, you know, I know Javi well enough at this point that I, I know what he would and wouldn't do. You know what I mean? So like I'll catch myself do something in a rehearsal and be like, oh, that's wrong. That's that's <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Rock. It's not Javi. That's Henry. Sorry. That's Henry. Sorry, guys. Let's take that back. Javi will come come out this time. Um, but yeah, it gets easier. I definitely mm -hmm. Javi was the first time we wrapped season three, like November 2019. Yeah. Um, and then just got back. I think last week was my first week. Maybe the week before. Um. Mm -hmm was my first week back and that gap of time of not being Javi was a little scary. Like that definitely got a little scary when I was like, I don't know if I remember how to be Javi. Like it's been, you know, six, 14 months or something. Interesting. The obvious answer to this question is, you know, you hope they enjoy it. You hope they want to rewatch it. They, you hope they enjoy your performance, but diving into it a little bit more deeper, Henry, what do you hope people get out of watching Gronish, like when they watch it? The, I guess biggest thing is, is an opportunity to hear both sides of any argument. Like I think mm. Gronish specifically does a really incredible job of bringing up social issues that are very current and exploring them from multiple perspectives. For sure. Um, so I, I, and that's kind of my favorite thing about the show is that even, you know, when it can be really lighthearted and light handed in its delivery of like information, it is, a, it, it's definitely talking about really serious issues at times. Um, so I, yeah, I hope it's just like opening people's eyes and giving people perspective. Yeah. It's, it, it but it's, it's it's interesting too that you identified with how important like we talked about like it's funny we talked about like comedies having kind of that heart and being dramatic and emotional and everything but the importance of these shows in terms of messaging and statements and yeah. standing for certain things is huge as well and being able to do it in like that light-handed manner is 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 I love dramas, so it's it's hard for me to even say it, but like I do think it's much easier to talk about social issues through comedy than it is through drama because no one wants to just like be yelled at. Like it, if you can make me laugh while I learn, um, I'm just gonna have a better time and be more open to it. Absolutely. No, seriously, that's that's a very good way of looking at it. There's always gonna be learning experiences. You kind of talked a little bit about them, you know, going in, being Javi and everything, and you're getting used to it. But um not just on Gronish, but in general, what are some learning experiences in the last like couple of uh, of years, like you know, three, four years of working as COVID's obviously different, but like I'm just saying in general, of like what have you learned about the craft of kind of acting and storytelling and going into work every day, Henry? The biggest thing I, I have learned is um, back in like 2018, 2017, I like, I kind of stepped away from acting for a minute. I wasn't sure if I like wanted to keep doing it. I was kind of not, I was just not having fun. I was yeah. like in a place where like, it just felt like a job and I, I wasn't, I just wasn't enjoying it at all. Um, and then I started working with this dude, Victor Villar Hauser, um, out here in like 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I give Victor a lot of credit for like making me fall in love with acting again. Yeah. Like truly fall in love again and start having fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I get that lesson of just, as soon as I was able to protect my ability to be open hearted and enjoy myself in what I was doing and not let like, the the industry as well as the world is just really good at 
shutting people down right and like making you kind of start to just like protect yourself and 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 not give yourself the opportunity to be disappointed mm -hmm. um and as soon as i stopped protecting myself in that capacity and like really let myself open up to the the potential of being disappointed again um i st work started i started working a lot more and i just started having fun man and then then, then it doesn't feel like a job anymore. No, you're absolutely right. That is a really good way of looking at it. Henry, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnive, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, bro. This was fun. Yeah, so Gronish, you guys are working on it now, but uh, they could they can catch Javi and Gronish. Yeah, Javi is in. <laughs> I think we got two more episodes for season three. I think. I don't yeah. know what episode we're on, but I think it's two more. Uh, and then, yeah, season four, Gronish, Javi's back. Absolutely. Um, where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Henry J. Esteve on Instagram and on Twitter, which I barely use, but it's there. H. <laughs> Esteve. Everyone has that. So I feel like Instagram, like everyone uses it. I feel like it's kind of like the staple of everything. But then like Facebook or Twitter becomes the like, I have one, but uh, I don't really I, have one. <laughs> yeah, but like I really just use it to like look for articles and I like things that I want to go read. That's literally, later. okay, so I have a confession to make because everyone's asking me like, why are you not on TikTok and everything? I am on TikTok, but I'm not on TikTok. You got a burner TikTok account? Well, no, like I don't do it. I just watch things. Like I don't even I like you. it. I just go through it. <laughs> I haven't done it on TikTok yet, but that is. Like I'm on I go on TikTok every day for that. Like just to check out the videos, like the sports <laughs> videos, the music, the music stuff. But like, I don't even like them. I just like, <laughs> you're, so just they're there, getting, you're just they're, they're not. You're, I'm sorry, TikTok creators, you're not getting the likes. You're getting the views. The view. But, you're giving views. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com/slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You can catch Henry as Javi in a Gronish until my son is Henry Esteve and PD Beats uh, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.